evening, SICW wrestling fans. Welcome to this week's SICW Sunday Night Update. We're going to go a little different this week, as normally we would be sitting here talking about what's coming on this week's SICW All-Star Wrestling episode. However, we are coming off of a great show, the SICW Halloween Spooktacular at the Belclair Fairgrounds. And Herb, you thought, which I believe is a great idea, that we should spend this week recapping that amazing event. Well, there's still such a buzz around the entire Metro East uh, St. Louis region of what took place uh, last Saturday night at that fairgrounds. I mean, everywhere you go, uh, all the messages that are pictures that are still being posted. I mean, it was just one great extravaganza there inside that Belclair fairgrounds. I mean, from the uh, uh, trunk or tree to the hay rides and the meet and greet with all those legends and then of course the night of uh, the wrestling uh, people's going to be talking about it for a long time oh absolutely i mean uh, it was a great night to be there there were hundreds of fans in attendance uh, from the moment it, the doors opened at 4 30 uh, excuse me four o'clock doors opened at four o'clock and the fans poured in there and they continued to arrive and continued to arrive all the way up until bell time at seven o'clock and they stuck around for for a great night of wrestling action I mean, where else do you have an event with 11 wrestling legends that are willing to meet and greet with the fans, sign autographs, take pictures? I mean, that was the highlight of the night for a lot of the people. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, professional photographers was there taking pictures of that two-ring battle royal because it hadn't been one since about 1983, 84, I think it was. Uh, so it was a little history-making right there. But uh, as you'll be able to see later on as we show some clips, uh, the crowd was a buzz, And like I said, the photographers were there. The fans had their cameras out. Uh, everybody just coming up talking about how great of an event it was. It brought the entire area together. You know, the kids running around in their costumes. We had the costume we contest. Uh, everybody, it was just a great night, and uh, people, uh, the most common thing was saying, when can we do this again? So, well, It was definitely a great show to put on. Let's talk a little bit about the legends that were there. You got to start the, the, the wrestling night off uh, with, a, with a great man in the ring there with you uh, helping doing some announcing. Well, there was nobody better than to do that other than our good friend uh, Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, who's been in the business for a long, long time knows every one of the legends that we had there that night managed almost all of them at one point or the other in his career so i thought it was only fitting to have him help do the opening ceremonies uh starting off from uh, the king all the way to the last one absolutely and and even prior to that he was present at the meet and greet back out at his table throughout the whole night the fans loved taking a few minutes to sit there and talk with the mouth of the south oh yeah you, you know he, he's always got something to say you know he came in town the day early helped us do some last minute pr work was even helping us set chairs up the night before. helped set up some chairs and just to make sure we had a successful event it was great to have jimmy hart back here in belleville yes it was great uh, guy the next guy first one he brought out was the man that was there to keep law and order together and that was none other than the great sergeant slaughter Sergeant Slaughter, you know, everybody loves the Sarge, and you got to have somebody like that to keep law and order. And, I mean, from the time he got out there for the meet and greet, uh, people stood in line for, it seemed like, a couple hours waiting to get autographs from him and hear his stories. And uh, he put a couple of them in the uh, camera, cl uh, ca camera clutch and uh, took pictures with them. And uh, it was just great to see the fans interact with somebody that they grew up on. And, uh, and he had a great time. It really was. He, he's one that I remember from growing up watching wrestling. You know, uh, one of, he was one of the big stars when I was younger watching wrestling and growing up and, and just having that good time to see him there in person. And as you said, just so personable, willing to do whatever he could to help anybody that was there, uh, signing autographs, taking pictures. And, and he definitely had a few people in that clutch uh, as the night went on. Yes, he did. Well, one of the greatest feuds ever was between him and the Iron Sheik that everybody will always remember that feud. So, so uh, the next guy that, that came down to the room was one of the kings there that night, none other than Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler, uh, you know, great individual. Everybody wanted to see him. You know, uh, helped Jimmy Hart get his start in the business down in the Memphis, uh, Tennessee area years ago. Uh, you know, I knew from the time that he got there, 
because uh, you know, he was going to be in action that night. He was all geared up for that. You know, he was asking me, hey, this guy I'm going against, you told me it was the big guy. Which one is he? And I pointed out that the big 450-pound Kowalski. And the, Jerry, the king was like, uh, okay, uh, I didn't realize it was that going to be that big of a wall. But uh, but a great, great guy, uh, Jerry, came out, uh, said some kind words, and uh, and then was in action later on in the evening. Absolutely. Uh, next to come out, uh, meet and greet with the fans, have had a great night. Uh, another great uh, wrestling legend, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Greg the Hammer, you know, he's always willing to lay that elbow down on him. Of course, you know, a lot of the older fans was coming up talking to him about his father, who was Johnny Valentine, that was really popular in the St. Louis days back at wrestling at the Chase. And Greg is a chip off of the old block and uh, signed a lot of autographs, took a lot of pictures. But everybody that came up was telling him about, you know, hey, I used to watch your dad at wrestling at the Chase. So really made him feel good. So great. it was good to have Greg in the house with us. It was, and, and great night. and. Always had a, quite a line at his table, people waiting there to meet him. You talked about wrestling action that night. Another great group that was in action that night, uh, one of the best tag teams of all time, came down as the Rock and Roll Express. Well, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all times, tag teams in the business, uh, Ricky Martin and Robert Gibson. Uh, what pleasant guys they were. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, ladies coming up saying, oh, we grew up with you, and they had the... Uh, bandanas and all of that around the wrist and uh, it was just great to see them come out very personable uh, it took time to talk to everybody and of course uh, the ones that probably didn't like them was uh, the professionals because they had to deal with them that night and uh, uh, it, uh, it didn't turn out too well for the professionals but uh, the Rock and Roll Express was a big hit at the Belclair Fairgrounds. Yes they were we'll talk a little bit about that match here shortly but while we're talking tag teams let's talk another tag team that was there perfect for the Halloween theme uh, the tag team by the name Demolition. Demolition, you know, uh, Axe and Smash, uh, two big guys. It was really a great tag team combination throughout their whole career. Uh, and they ended up there at the fairgrounds, another group of uh, two guys that just love to sit and talk to the business. And a lot of fans came up uh, uh, asking them for their autographs and buying pictures. And uh, two, two gentlemen that just really wanted to take the time. And it, it couldn't have been better at the Halloween atmosphere that we had there. Yes, definitely. Definitely a great night having demolition in the house. This next gentleman had a busy week with SICW. Not only was he there with us at the Halloween Spooktacular, but earlier this week, his hometown, Florissant, Missouri, uh, they had a little festival for him along with the wrestling at the chase. Uh, the mayor was there, gave him a, a proclamation, none other than the ace, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. The ace, uh, our, our uh, hometown hero, uh, like you said, the uh, city of Florissant, his hometown, uh, where he's lived probably for the last 30 plus years, honored him for his uh, contribution to the uh, professional wrestling business. Of course, as uh, we talked that night at the uh, ceremony, his father was on the first card back in uh, 1959 at Wrestling at the Chase. Uh, his brother, Barry, who just passed away recently, a uh, big wrestling star. And of course, uh, uh, everybody knows uh, Randy Orton, uh, WWE legend, uh, still there uh, doing uh, doing what he wants to do. And of course, then Bob is just great, runs the uh, Ace Wrestling Academy for SICW. And uh, I was really glad that they honored Bob that way. And uh, he was there Saturday uh, at the uh, meet and greet. And uh, again, people standing in line just waiting to get his autograph and talk to him. Absolutely. Let's talk about another wrestler that was in action this past weekend at the Halloween Spooktacular, and that was a gentleman by the name of Haku. Haku, you know, one of the biggest, toughest men in the business, if not the toughest anybody you talk to uh, in the professional side of the business to tell you uh, if they ever had to go up in the ring with him, it was always a tough night for him. Uh, he can walk to walk and talk to talk. He can back it up. Uh, he can get in there and really... Uh, really take it to his opponent, which we'll see a little bit later on. But uh, yes, he, um, uh, another guy that everybody just wanted to meet because they, they've seen him throughout his career, what he's capable of doing. Absolutely, and, and he lived up to that. Uh, yes, he did. Definitely ha had a heck of a match on Saturday. Now, one last gentleman, you had him at the first table inside the door. That way, if, if anything got too rowdy, you had a man there to help you. And they, he went by the name of Dr. D. David Schultz. Dr. D. David Schultz, my good friend, um, just a guy that uh, you love to meet and talk with. He's, you know, he's got a, uh, a score to settle in the business, and he makes no bones about that. 
uh, and you know, when I was up there at the table with him, not one person came up and asked him that uh, wrong question about the business. Uh, but he took a lot of photographs with uh, the fans, signed a lot of autographs. Sold Dr. quite D. a few of his books. So, so you know, if you uh, if you haven't picked up one of Dr. D's uh, David books, uh, Schultz's books, you need to because not only does it talk about his career in the wrestling business, it talks about his bounty hunting mm -hmm. business, and he's getting ready to write a new book, and it's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly of professional wrestling. And I joked with him and said, "Well, I hope I'm in there somewhere to probably be in the ugly part," but he assured me it won't be. So, but it was. It's always great to have Dr. D. David Schultz on anything that SICW is involved with. So, Herb, we walked through those 11 legends. We talked about the trunk or treat. We talked about the hay rides. That, that was enough to make a night a fan fest in itself. But beyond that, now we've got 10 great matches of wrestling that, that we're going to talk about uh, that happened there that night. So the fans really had hours worth of entertainment, and most of them were there for the whole time. Oh, I don't think anybody left early. Um, I mean, and it seemed like as the night went on, the crowd got bigger and got closer to the rings, and I mean, all you could see is fans with their cameras taking pictures, and at times you couldn't even hear yourself thinking there. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the opening match. A couple, a couple of SICW tag teams that we've seen in action before, and it was a great event that night. We saw Gary, uh, Gary Jackson and Gil Rogers take on... Christopher Hargis and the Iron Man, Ken Casa. Well, you know, the team of uh, the Night Train, Gary Jackson and Gil Roger, the popular team, uh, anywhere they're at, they're the popular team. And, of course, you know, when you have the likes of King Christopher Hargis and uh, the Iron Man, Ken Casa, you know, who's always in their corner, uh, uh, Travis the Crook Cook. So that match uh, opened, what, what a match to open up your night uh, of the business. It was, uh, it was a wild one, and uh, the fans really loved it. It was. It was definitely a way for the, the fans to get interested, get hooked really quick. And if that is your opening card, you know the rest of the night is going to be wild. Yeah. And it did not disappoint. From that, we went straight into a match with one of those legends. We saw Jerry the King Lawler take on Kowalski, and Kowalski had some tricks in his corner as well. Well, yeah, you know, you have the uh, likes of uh, Curtis Wild, uh, the Wildfire, uh, and, and Wildfire with him in his corner. That's always trouble for anybody. Uh, that role was switched during this time, this match. Usually it's Curtis Wild in action, and the big 450-pound Kowalski is his quote, quote, uh, man wall on the outside. But uh, this match, it was reversed, and it was uh, Kowalski. And I got to tell you, I mean, there, I was worried for the king there for quite a bit of that match. I mean, you got a guy, 450 pounds, going against the uh, king, uh, Jerry Lawler. And there was times that uh, the king was down, and I thought he was out a couple different times. And especially when you have Curtis Wild and Wildfire on the outside of the ring, the king needed eyes in the back of his head, on the side of his head. Uh, he needed to be focused on Kowalski. And, but in the end, he was able to pull it out and, and come up victorious. Yes, he was. Over I mean, he stood there and did a standing drop kick on Kowalski, and boy, Kowalski was wavering back and forth. And uh, you know, that big, big uh, tree trunk was uh, ready to go down. But uh, the king was able to uh, to uh, to get the better of Kowalski. But Kowalski has nothing to be ashamed of. I can no. tell you, it, it was an outstanding match and a way to continue that charge into that night of how good the professional wrestling was there at the Belle Claire Fairgrounds. Yes, that, that, that would have been a main event in any, any arena. It was a night of main events. Every, 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 every match was a main event. And, and let's talk about this next match, a great singles match with a, uh, a up-and-comer here at SICW and the great Jason Breed taking on a man from down in Tennessee, Jake Lawless. What a match that was, and you're right, Jason Breed is really climbing that ladder fast. Uh, he is uh, one half of the SICW Tag Team Champions along with uh, uh, Flash Flanagan. He was in single competition Saturday night. Jake Lawless from Tennessee, uh, from uh, the uh, former USA Championship Wrestling Group, uh, made an appearance there, and I knew that was going to be a, a good match because uh, they were so uh, matched evenly. Uh, Jake Lawless uh, will break those rules anytime he can to get to, uh, get a victory, but came up short. But uh, Jason Breed is a, uh, uh, a gentleman that I think that you got to keep your eye on uh, in the SICW because he's really climbing that ladder fast for the short time that he's been with us. And he has his eyes set on the Travis Cook organization and anything that stands in his way of taking them down. 
Well, he's made that clear in a couple of uh, interviews that he's done that um, if the TCO, any of them, uh, wants to uh, to have it out with him, just bring it on. And uh, and I don't think he's going to back down. No, he's ready for whatever fight you throw at him. Exactly. Talking about a fight, let's talk about this next one. His tag team partner, not, not last Saturday, though, his tag team partner was in a tag match, but it was Flash Flanagan tagged up with the new Big Texan as they went into battle with Rough Cut Rick Ruby and Richard Shaw. Another main event. You know, rough cut Rick Ruby, a mountain of a man. You know, uh, Shaw, a, a big individual. And then on the other side, Flash Flanagan, you know, one of the guys that's been around for a long time, and he's a guy that can brawl, he can wrestle, whatever he, whatever his opponent wants to do, he's going to give it to him. But then you put the likes of the new Big Texan, and I say the new Big Texan because there is a fire been lit underneath him. Oh, boy. And I'm telling you, uh, everything from the coming to the ring with the uh, branding iron and the uh, cowbell um, and the rope, the bull rope, and then that devastating lariat that he does. And uh, we got to witness that lariat on uh, a Saturday night. You know, at first I didn't even know that match was going to get to start. Uh, Rick Ruby came out and kind of disrespected one of the the greatest fans in SICW, our great friend. There was a seat there ringside in memory of our good friend Jerry Bullion. And rough cut Rick Ruby thought he was deserving enough to sit in that seat. And Jerry's sister was going to take care of that match before it even got started. Well, you know, we have, and you know, we have pledged to uh, uh, Peggy uh, Mender uh, and her family that Jerry Bullion was such a long time wrestling fan, over 40 plus years that he's been following SICW that uh, we have designated a chair that will be at every one of our events with his name on it uh, in memory of him because we know he's looking down on us because he was such an avid wrestling fan and it's always next to her chair and Rick Ruby for whatever reason thought that he as you said had the right to go over there and sit down in it and of course Peggy's not going to have any of that uh, and uh, she, she I don't know not. if you saw but when I saw that happen I got up uh, and got around the other side the ring because uh, Peggy is a, a fan, has been a fan herself, and uh, she's not going to let anybody disrespect her brother's memories. And, and me watching that, I thought she was going to deliver the lariat before uh, the big <laughs> Texan had a chance to. Yeah. So they were able to get in that ring, and we were able to see a, a great match, and big Texan and Flash Flanagan victorious with the delivery of another one of those great lariats. Whew. Big lariats, I'm telling you. Whew. The next match was a match we've seen a couple times here recently. And it keeps getting better and better. Uh, kind of what we've been playing as an amateur wrestling battle with the great Belleville's greatest Bobby D took on the superstar Steve Fender. What a match that was. I mean, when Dr. Drew and I was sitting there at ringside, I mean, it was it was back and forth. And like you said, it's been they've been tit for tat. You know, they're they're equal up kind of uh, each win. But I even had fans coming up to me, and they've been texting me since and saying, you know, maybe you ought to do a best out of three match with these guys because it's such an intense match between Superstar Steve Fender and Belleville's own Bobby D. I mean, it was back and forth, in the ring, out of the ring. Um, that, that's a, too close of a match to call either way. So uh, the fans really, another main event. Well, and you talk about best of three, we've seen Bobby D victorious. We've seen Superstar Steve victorious. You know, maybe it is time to, to have a, a winner-take-all here and see who really is the, the best, you know, amateur-style wrestling. Uh, well, they start, they start off kind of amateur, but then, boy, then they really tune it up a notch or two. And like I said, in the ring, out of the ring, on top of the ropes, uh, it's just really too hard of a match to call. Absolutely. Next match ended in a kind of a peculiar way that, that doesn't happen very often when we saw the high-flying Billy McNeil taking on a friend of his in the Canadian hero, Sean Vincent. You know, and props to Billy McNeil. I mean, he could have, that, that match could have went down in the record book as a win for him because Sean uh, tried to do the leapfrog, came down on his uh, ankle, uh, twisted it. Uh, in fact, we saw pictures of it that was uh, taken of it, uh, pretty bruised up. But uh, uh, referee awarded the match to Billy McNeil, but uh, yeah, stopped the match. Said, he Look, stopped it. So I can't, can't let this on. continue. Um, and I knew right away when the referee was giving me the signal that there was a uh, it was an injury that uh, that that uh, Sean wasn't going to be able to continue. Uh, 
Um, but Billy said, nope, I'm not going to take the win that way. We'll catch up and we'll have a rematch. And that's the kind of people that we have in that SICW locker room. Um, and I really applaud Billy McNeil for that. And we wish Sean all the uh, speedy recovery to get that ankle better. Uh, the reports that we got the next a couple of days after that was that well, there was no fractures, just really a badly yeah. bruised ankle. Waiting on some results of the MRIs. Yeah. And it definitely did not look good. Uh, let's talk about another group of legends that were in action that night when we witnessed the Rock and Roll Express taking on probably the, the one of the better tag teams of the area, if not one of the best tag teams in the professionals. Well, it's no doubt the professionals are the best tag team combination in the Midwest or anywhere as far as that goes. They have been, I've said this for uh, many years now, they're, they're like peanut butter and jelly. They just jam together. Uh, they know how each other's going to work. Uh, they uh, take each other, care of each other. Um, but they had their uh, work cut out for them against the uh, tag team of the Rock and Roll Express. And I mean, the cra they were a little disadvantaged because the crowd was behind uh, the Rock and Roll Express. Well, and they showed up wearing kilts. Yeah. I mean, that didn't caught, do them any good. caught all the fans <laughs> off guard going, hey, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, what's going on here? And uh, so, and then again, I know, and I don't know if it was, um, they just didn't seem, I said they jammed together, but. That, that night, it just seemed like they were off. They weren't on their A game. Well, Rock and Roll Express was able to manipulate them a little Throw them bit. off their A game. There, there was a couple times that uh, they were able to make some quick dodging moves, and the professionals were caught face-to-face. -face. Yeah, and again, so that might have had something to do with it. Uh, but, uh, but again, it was a great match. Again, another main event. Absolutely. Well, speaking of main events, this next one was the semi-main event, and it was a main event uh, in in any means, in any decade, in any profession, it was a two ring battle royal for the Central States Championship. Well, I think it ended up being twenty one contestants uh, in those two rings, uh, and I joked um, people as the, the uh, people in it was just coming out the wrestlers, you know. Uh, Rough Cut Rick Ruby, the big Texan, Kowalski, 450 pounds. And, I mean, somebody said, you know, where's the beef at? It was in, in the Belclair yeah, Fairgrounds that night. But the ring stayed standing. I Both mean. rings. And, you know, i got to give a shout-out to my good friend Scotty Z from New Breed uh, Wrestling because uh, he brought his ring up. That's why we were able to have the two-ring battle royal. You can't have two-ring battle royal with only one ring. With only so, one. so uh, again, thanks to uh, Scotty Z at New Breed Wrestling and your crew to come up and help you, Larry, and all of them. And, uh uh, it was great uh, action like you hadn't seen. People coming up saying, we've never seen anything like this before. Absolutely. Well, you wouldn't hear because the last time there was a two-ring battle royal was our great friend uh, Larry Matasek did one at the St. Louis Checker Dome, and that was the last two-ring battle royal ever. And, Herb, not something we would normally do here, but let's take a second and look at some clips from that two-ring battle royal back in Belleville.
Come down to the finish, and the great night train, Gary Jackson, is our Central States champion. Well, and you, you heard him that night talk about how prestigious that was for him. When he started his career, he started in the Central States, which was in the Kansas City area, uh, and he was so honored. Uh, and, I mean, you know, when I talk about this guy being the energized bunny, uh, I mean, he, he's been doing this a long, long time, you know. Uh, he used to sneak into the uh, wrestling at the chase when he was uh, 16 years old. And uh, he has had a career, uh, retired from the military, continues to wrestle to this day. He is one of the best, if not the best, in the market in professional wrestling out there. Uh, other promoters will tell you that. Other men he shares the locker room with. And I'm just so happy to have him in our locker room and now as the uh, Central States uh, champion. Great to see another belt that can be defended here at SICW. And I know the list will be long and distinguished for those that are in line that, that want to go up for that title. Yes, it will be. And when we talk about main events, we had a main event of the century when we watched the, the toughest man alive, the King Haku, went to battle against the SICW champion of the international bounty hunter Attila Khan. Again, if you put them on the same level, which I think you have to, uh, when you look at the career of King Haku, everybody he's fought from day one, the matches that he's had uh, against all the likes of the greats, and then you look at the matches that Attila Khan, under the leadership tutelage of Travis the Cook, uh, Crook Cook, those two were pretty equally balanced there. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'll tell, I was worried about that match. From the time I booked it until it ended, I was worried because I didn't know what was going to be able to come out of that. They are two monsters. They both had something they wanted to prove to one another. And you've seen what happened. Well, you saw what happened. I saw what happened. Doesn't usually go that way. But tonight, with your permission, uh, Let's let the fans take a look at what happened. Yeah, we recognize not everybody could be there that night. Uh, and again, the fans that were there saw uh, a, a match. Uh, and we want to say, we want to warn you that some it may not be good for some viewers. Yeah, viewer discretion is definitely advised. Right. Take a look. He can't knock you down! 
Let's go, Chella! Yes. Let's go, Chilla. Now you got him where you want it. Now you got him where you want it. Let's go. Oh, Well, Herb, who would have thought Attila Khan would defeat Haku with the 1-2-3 in the middle of the ring? Well, there's probably only one person out there that thought that was Travis Cook. I mean, You didn't think that I when, had no when you no. recruited Haku out in Las Vegas I and said, that, I need you to come in and take care of Attila Khan and, and the Travis was, Cook he, organization. He, he was this close to getting... Travis Cook, he got his hands well, on him. Well, and maybe that distraction is what ultimately and, cost and him. It may well have been, but I was kind of hoping he'd, it, he'd hold on to him for about five minutes or so. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it happens. Um, it just really uh, gave Travis something more to brag about, which, you know, in this business is okay. But I'm telling you, there's going to come a day, uh, and it could be real soon. It definitely could be real soon, and, and we're going to still talk about what's coming here in SICW. But before we move into that, Herb, let's, let's wrap up a little bit on the SICW Halloween Spooktacular. Is there anything you would have done different? I don't know what it would have been. I mean, the, the fans were just so happy. I mean, um, you know, that's a big building, uh, and it was packed. It was full. The every every stand. chair they had was set up. The concession stand was busy. You heard uh, a couple of days afterwards how busy the concession stand was. The uh, the cold beverages were flowing. Uh, the the youngsters, the uh, the older fans, everybody had a great time. All the legends I've heard from each and every one of them uh, texting me saying, "Hey, it was a great show. You know, you, you did it right." People who couldn't get there are good friends. Darla Staggs, uh, Barbara Goodish, the widow of Bruiser Brody, texted us. They saw uh, well, different pictures. They, they even sponsored a match. I mean, yes. Uh, here we get to the main event. We hear this match is sponsored by the Four Horsewomen. And right. So they even went together. They Mercy, couldn't be there, yeah. but they wanted to make sure that they sponsored that main event of all main and, events. And they did. So people from around the country was had their eyes on Belleville, Illinois, on this match because there had been a lot of promo, promo work done on it, a lot of talk for the last two, three months, and it paid off. Uh, and I can't say enough for, you know, the, the locker room of SICW, for all the great fans, because I say that all the time. No fans, no SICW. That's just the bottom line. I don't, I'll argue that with anybody. Mm -hmm. Got to have those great fans. And we got them, and they poured out uh, that Saturday night at Belclair Fairgrounds. They absolutely did. So what's next? Where, does, where do those fans need to go coming off of a night like that to see this continue? Well, if, if I was one of those fans that wanted to see more of that uh, action, uh, Saturday night, November the 13th at the East Crown Lake Community Center, another great card there. We're there every month. Uh, and uh, a tag, I mean, a, a championship match will be on the line there. Uh, Travis Cook signed it, uh, and I was glad because I've reached out to a gentleman who um, – has probably had more matches uh, than a lot of wrestlers in the Midwest. And uh, he's been with us now a couple times. He's kind of came back out of uh, his semi-retirement state. And I'm talking about the human wrecking ball, Pete Madden. You've seen him. you witnessed him in action. Came to Swansea Firehouse this and, year. And in Swansea Firehouse, he was all over the place. And if there's anybody that can wrestle, who can rumble, who can brawl, who can bleed, 
more than a telecon can. It's the Human Wrecking Ball, Pete Madden. And so the main event on November the 13th at the East Carolina Community Center, I've signed the Human Wrecking Ball, Pete Madden, to go one-on-one -on -one, uh, against the telecon, the International Bounty Hunter. Definitely going to be a great night. And don't forget, fans, if you come out on Saturday, November 13th, uh, that night you'll have your opportunity to get free tickets for Sunday, November 14th, when we return to the East Carondelet Community Center for the TV taping. So It's always a fun time on Sunday afternoon. Fans come out for a little studio audience and uh, be a part of those uh, TV tapings. And uh, and like you said, it's uh, come out Saturday night and then be a part of that TV taping. You'll, you'll have a great time. Absolutely. And Herb, you know, we talked about, uh, about October was a, a month to remember and that you would never be able to top that. <laughs> Here comes another rabbit out of your hat, well, December 1st. Well, and it's not a rabbit out of hat. This is just the right thing to do. Um, depending, no matter what happens on November the 13th, because uh, I'm supposed to be impartial, but it would be nice, and wouldn't you agree, that uh, the human wrecking ball scored a victory there? I think that would be amazing. Uh, it couldn't happen to a better guy than Pete Madden. Uh, so I know a lot of the fans are going to be rooting for the human wrecking ball. Uh, so regardless, win, lose, or draw for a telecon, I've signed a match for him on uh, Wednesday night, December the 1st. Uh, there's a place over in uh, 270 and uh, Watson Road in St. Louis called the Holiday Inn next to the Viking Lounge. You know that area mm -hmm. there. Everybody knows that area there. Yeah, right there between Sunset Hills and Kirkwood. Exactly. It's a great, great location. But the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame uh, has asked to have a match there. And part of the uh, ceremonies that night is they're going to be inducting uh, Sam Muchnick, who was the former president of the National Wrestling Alliance for off and on for over 41 years. They're going to induct my dear great friend, uh, late friend, uh, Larry Matasek, who was the voice of wrestling at the chase for many, many years and uh, worked under Sam Muchnick every day in the office. And then the third individual they're going to be inducting into the sports writer uh, to the sports hall of fame is uh, our good friend, late friend uh, Mickey Garagiola, the brother of Joe Garagiola, who was the first play-by-play -play announcer in 1959 on Wrestling at the Chase, who went on to go to New York and uh, become a, uh, a, a great national figure himself. Absolutely. So those three gentlemen will be inducted. Their families will be there. The Muchnick family, uh, the Gary Jola family, uh, Pat Matasek will be there, Larry's a widow. Uh, but also, we've uh, reached out to a former NWA uh, member. Uh, his brother was a former uh, NWA champion, Jack Briscoe. His brother, Gerald Briscoe, will be joining us that night. Jerry and Jack was big in St. Louis. They were big anywhere anywhere they wrestled together, uh, both of them. And so Gerald Briscoe will be there with us that night. Also, our good friend, uh, the ace cowboy Bob Orton, mm -hmm. will be joining us. Also, St. Louis's own local former SICW champion, somebody that uh, traveled the roads with Bruiser Brody, Crusher Blackwell, Dick Murdoch. I'm speaking of Ron Powers will be there that night to help with the induction ceremony. But the earth-shaking news that we heard here last week, uh, people said they felt the tremors going, is when uh, William Corrigan, uh, the uh, owner president of the National Wrestling Alliance, and myself came to an agreement that on that night, Wednesday, December the 1st, there will be a world title match, the NWA title, the one, the most pre prestigious title in the country. Around Ten the pounds world, of gold, as they call it. Ten pounds of gold will be on the line that night, and the NWA champion, Trevor Murdoch, who won that title just recently at the Chase Park Plaza, NWA 73 night, will be at that December 1st card, and he's going to be defending that title against the international bounty hunter, Atilicon. Now, what a match that's going to be. What a match that is going to be. Uh, I hope the Holiday Inn has extra security that night to hold the walls in. Well, tickets are already being sold. I mean, they've, they're, they're, the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame is saying that they're flying uh, off of the machine. But these two men both worked, trained under the late, great Harley Race. 
That, that they did. So they've got something to prove. Yes, they do. And you talked about those tickets being on sale right now. Go right now to SICW.org. Click that purchase link for purchasing tickets, and you'll be able to select that event December 1st, and it'll take you right to where you can purchase them because I guarantee you those tickets are going to sell out. Well, it's going to be like the show that we did here a few weeks ago back at the Missouri Athletic Club. Those tickets went on sale, and that was a membership only, mm -hmm. but they were sold within the first 50 minutes through their membership. This is open to the public. Open to so, the public. So you and want they to have, get your tickets early. They have general admission seats, they have ringside seats, and they have some VIP tables you could purchase. Exactly. So you want to make sure you do that sooner than later because you don't want to miss your opportunity First of all, to see those three wrestling legends inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame where they deserve to be amongst no other and then to, to top that all off, an NWA title match right here in St. Louis. Well, and we got to give uh, accolades to uh, uh, Ed Wheatley, the author of Wrestling at the Chase, that new book that just came out. Uh, he's a member of that uh, uh, Sports Hall of Fame. And um, it's a great working with him. He'll be there. He'll have that new Wrestling at the Chase book uh, that you can uh, get just right before the holidays. It's going to make a good Christmas uh, gift. He'll be set up there. If you haven't checked out that new Wrestling at the Chase book, I'm telling you, it's, it's great, loaded, full of uh, photos and stories. Uh, it's a coffee table style book. And uh, you can go to SICWR. Also for sale on SICW.org. And, and, and book there. But, so uh, Ed's helped put this together. Uh, it is going to be a night, and for those of you, I mean, I had the opportunity to talk with uh, the champion, Trevor Murdoch, and he does have something to prove to a telecon, and it, basically he summed it up and said, what I've got to prove to him is, is I am the best. I learn from the best. And, of course, Attila don't speak a whole bunch, but, of course, his handler, his manager, whatever you deem him, uh, Travis Cook, seems to think that a telecon has something to prove to Trevor Murdoch. So we're going to let them two collide. And when I say collide, the NWA champion, Trevor Murdoch, this is his first title defense since winning it at the uh, Corsan mm -hmm. Room, will go against the Telecon. And when those two do this, the, those who are going to benefit it is the ones that are sitting in that room that gets to see history being made. Absolutely, Herb. A little bit unorthodox style here for, for our episode tonight, but as you said, the Halloween Spooktacular was such a great event that how could we not share it with the fans that couldn't be there in attendance? So it was great that we were able to put this on tonight. Uh, next, next Sunday we will be back with our Sunday night update and the next episode of SICW All-Star Wrestling. So until next Sunday, we want to see you at the matches.